Tell the person next to you, Jesus specializes in changing lives. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> well, hey, it's great to see Terry. Terry, good to see you. Terry's back. Yeah, good to see you. We'll catch up with you as we go along. Yeah, I have an unusual message um, today. I don't know how it's going to come out. And um, it's kind of weaving, you know, around truth and experience. There's sometimes a great uh, gap between truth and experience. But I hope it comes out good. I think uh, these thoughts came to my head and I felt they were from the Lord. So I'll do my best and I hope that it will give you food for thought. So stretch your hands towards me. Just pray for me. Father, I thank you for the prayers of the saints. And uh, I need your anointing. Without your anointing, I can do nothing. We can do nothing without you, Lord. So just anoint me and bless this time as we uh, share this time together. And let, may this word be meaningful to many, wherever it goes. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I want to start off with two scriptures. The first one is a, a very well-known one, and a lot of people have memorized this and know it. It's Proverbs 3, verse 4 and 5. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. That's a, that's a very popular scripture. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And then uh, the other scripture is Hebrews 4.12. It's also in my memory box. The word of God is living and active. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It pierces to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, of joints and marrow, and it's a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. You know, as Christians, uh, God has called us to live by God's word. Uh, it, this may sound strange to you, but you don't live your life only by what you feel the Holy Spirit is saying to you. You live your life by the written word. The reason you come to church is not because you got a prophecy that you should go to church. The Bible tells you you need to belong to a church. Amen? Amen? The reason why we evangelize and share our faith is because the Bible says go into all the world and share the gospel with all creation. And, of course, when the Holy Spirit speaks to us, we should obey him. But he'll always be confirming the word and speaking about the principles of the word to us. Amen? Amen. So you've got some people who are very spirit-orientated, and they don't even read the Bible much. They said, the Holy Spirit said this, and the Holy Spirit said that. When I was in Bible school, this, this girl said, the Holy Spirit told me to join the school. And then after a few months, she left. I guess the Holy Spirit told her to leave. <laughs> and uh, either that or she got it wrong, you know. Uh, but uh, I just felt I wanted to study the Word of God. So I went to Bible school, and I finished the course because I wanted to study the Word of God. Uh, so, you know, some people are what we call super spiritual. But, you know, um, we live by God's word. God's word directs our thoughts. There's so many things we do uh, because God tells us to, to do it. Why do you pray every day? Why do you read your Bible? Uh, Jesus said, when you pray, go into your room and shut the door. And, he, you know, he told, told us that we should always pray and not give up. I don't wait for the Holy Spirit to say, you need to pray every day. Sometimes the Holy Spirit may remind you that you need to pray every day because you haven't been praying every day, but the Bible told you to do that in the first place. Are you following me? Yes. So we live by the written word of God. And uh, the main thought I want to put across to us is we, we need to learn to trust God no matter what happens. You know, very few people experience the fullness of the promises of God in every way throughout their entire lives. Very few people. But we are firm believers that we should believe the word of God and what the word of God says is true. Amen? You know, uh, there's Kenneth Hagin, uh, one of my favorite preachers. His wife had this sort of incurable uh, disease uh, and they couldn't get rid of it. And... Um, she was very close to dying because suddenly she couldn't breathe in the middle of the night and so on. And uh, he prayed and asked God to heal his wife. And uh, this is strange, you know, uh, what he felt God was saying to him. He said, God said to him that your wife was destined to live unto a certain age. But because you've prayed, I will let her live longer. Isn't that incredible? 
you know? I, I think that's, in, that's incredible. But uh, Denise and I were driving back from Brent Cross. Anybody been to Brent Cross? <laughs> we were driving back from Brent Cross yesterday, and uh, I put on UCB2, and uh, Christine Kane was speaking. You know, have you heard of Christine Kane? Uh, I, I've heard of her. I'm aware of her. I don't, haven't listened to her very much, but I know she's a real woman of faith, and she's a, 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 an amazing preacher, you know? And uh, she was talking about being grounded in God's word. She said, when you're grounded in God's word, you know, when a calamity comes or a difficulty comes, you won't be shaken because you're grounded in God's word. And she gave some examples, you know, how uh, her mother died at the most inconvenient time. She couldn't get back, uh, in very, having difficulty getting back for the funeral. And then she said she was diagnosed with cancer. Uh, and I'm thinking she's sharing all these things that she was going through. Uh, and, uh, you know, the bottom line she was saying, uh, whatever happens, I trust God. Amen? And that's a good place to be, that you know that God is in charge of your life. She gave an example. You know, there are many Christian young men and women who go to university. And uh, it's a statistic that many young Christians who go to university lose their faith at university. Because they face all kinds of philosophies and temptations. And so... A young man or a young woman can go to university, you know, full of faith and belief in God. And then a few years later, they've got their degree, but they've lost their relationship with God. And uh, what she was saying, which I really liked, and, uh, you know, she started preaching and uh, Denise and I just went quiet. And we started listening to her on UCB too. And uh, it really spoke to us. And she was just saying how, uh, you know, that, when you're grounded, if you're a young person and you're grounded and you've got a living relationship with Christ and it's working, when you go to university, it won't be shaken because you're grounded. Amen? You know, and then I, I began to think about, you know, you know, when you get to 73, uh, you'll get there one day if you're not there already. When you get to 73, your perspective of life changes. You know, uh, how old are you? 33. Uh, yeah, I've been 33. I've been 33. No, you're very young. <laughs> and when I was in my 30s, my perspective of life was, you know, yeah. Uh, um, you know, I was fit, I was strong, I was healthy, everything like that. Then you get into your 40s and your 50s and your 60s and then your 70s. And, uh, and then, you know, you begin to look at life from where you are. And I guess I'm now looking at life from where I am. And, uh, you know, I was thinking about uh, many great preachers that had lived uh, in the past. You know, these are people of outstanding achievement. I could mention so many of them. For instance, there's one lady who many of you may not have heard of. Her name was Maria Woodworth Etha. And she was, she was born uh, on the 22nd of July, 1844. And she died in September 24. She was the most amazing woman. Uh, she was a preacher. Uh, she, you know, had terrible pain in her life. Uh, I think her husband left her and many of her children uh, didn't survive. She went through horrendous suffering. And uh, the, the miracles that she saw, I don't know of any other preacher in, uh, in the healing ministry that's seen more miracles than this lady. Outstanding miracles. She would preach. And uh, she was also preaching in a day when women preachers were not very accepted. But she was a woman preacher. And thousands of people were showing up, you know, for her meetings. And they call her the mother and the grandmother of the Pentecostal movement. Because even before the Pentecostal churches started, this lady was moving in all nine gifts of the Spirit. But as she got older and she had health problems, she still kept preaching from a wheelchair. Isn't that amazing? Then I started thinking of, of many of my friends, you know, who were great uh, men and women of God. So I'm posing the question, uh, you know, how do we live? Uh, what do we do? How do we react when things don't go the way we hope? You remember Philip Asamoah's um, sermon? Yeah? I looked it up. I found it on YouTube. He said, you know, what do you do when God doesn't do what you want him to do? And it was a very moving sermon. He wept 
because he prayed for his wife so many times and uh, she nearly died and every time he prayed for her she was healed and then one day he prayed for her and she went and uh, he was like um, broken I've never seen I've known Philip for years more than 30 years possibly 40 years I've never seen him so broken and weeping and missing someone that he, he loved so deeply. And uh, he had to go through that, you know. And he, uh, I, I love the, the sermon he preached, you know. But if we're honest, many don't experience always what God promises. Is that a fact? Yes. Yes. You know, I believe that we can experience everything that God promises. And I believe in the promises of God. You know, people ask me, how's your health and so on. And how's this and how's that? And my answer is this. I'm standing on the word of God every day. I'm believing God every day. Amen? Amen. I'm believing what God says is going to happen. Uh, and uh, there are many preachers, you know, that I have kind of looked up to. Uh, and I've been shocked, you know, when they've died of, a, of an ailment. I mean, they're great men of God. I mean, greater than uh, most preachers would ever dream of being. And then when they get, you know, to later ages, uh, suddenly you hear that they have passed. I could mention names, but because this is going on YouTube, I'm not going to mention any names. But I could mention some of the names of the most famous preachers in the world who have died of cancer, you know, who died, have not lived out. But what they achieved in their life was incredible. So the thought I'm trying to throw out over here, I don't want to confuse you, is that we need to learn to trust God no matter what happens. And I'm always looking, you know, in, in the Bible school I've been teaching on healing. And uh, I said, uh, I believe Christ has provided healing for us. In this church, we believe in the healing and the atonement. Our denomination believes in healing and the atonement. We believe that when someone is sick, that they're entitled to healing. Amen? And yet, if we're honest, sometimes we don't see it happen. Isn't that right? You know, when, you, when someone is uh, uh, suffering or something and they, they, they're getting older, they say, oh, look at Moses. He was 120 years old and his eye was not dimmed and he hadn't lost his vigor. Hey, but you ain't Moses. <laughs> For every one Moses that you can mention to me, there are hundreds and hundreds who didn't live to 120 and his eyes were dimmed. In fact, he started his ministry with 80. Yeah. He was 85 years old, and uh, he's uh, the Caleb. I'm uh, Caleb, but was 85 years old. You know, Moses, yeah, Moses started when he was 80. That's right. Thank you, Martin. It's Martin from Austria. Sorry, are you? Are you? Yeah, yeah. I'm preaching a sermon. You can ask me questions afterward. You can ask me questions. You can ask me questions afterwards. I'll come and talk to you. Yeah, I, I, if you've got questions, that's a good thing. The disciples always said to Jesus, what did you mean? What do you mean when you said that? And so that's okay. But I, I'm just looking at life from another perspective. You know, I could mention uh, many great preachers' names who had an amazing ministry. In fact, they led millions to Christ, and then they may have died of cancer. And I think, well, how could that happen? How could such a great man of God, you know, end up like that? And yet, in their lifetime, they achieved so much, you know. And uh, shall I tell them my testimony? Yes. Yeah? <laughs> but some of you don't know. But about four years ago, I was diagnosed with cancer, prostate cancer. And uh, it was a serious matter. I, I spoke to Colin Urquhart, and uh, he had recovered from cancer. And he told me, uh, don't make it public, because people will keep phoning you and asking you how you are. He said, don't make it public. Just tell your, your relatives and the elders. The elders of the church all knew that I had been diagnosed with prostate cancer. So I said to my family, I don't want to take treatment. I'm just going to trust God. So my family gathered around me and they said, we want you to take the treatment. You know? So I went into a room and I went into another world. I was sitting there watching people having chemotherapy. And I thought, I never knew this world existed. And all these people here are suffering. 
you know, I never knew that there was this awful suffering, you know. Um, what's the famous lady preacher's name? Joyce Meyer. She was diagnosed with cancer. She's got two hips. But she's still going strong. I'll tell you what. Joyce Meyer was diagnosed with cancer. She's recovered from cancer. And she's got hips put in. But she's still serving the Lord and still preaching. Isn't that good? Because what she's doing, she's trusting the Lord no matter what. So I said, I believe God to heal me. So I, I went and had some chemo. Uh, terrible. I wish I hadn't told you. <laughs> I went and had some chemo. I hated every moment of it. But uh, I went through it. And I said, Lord, don't let me go bald. Um, like Solomon. <laughs> <laughs> and so the Lord the Lord preserved my hair you see I've still got 73 and I've still got hair so I had the treatment and God healed me of cancer I'm 100% clear of cancer yeah but I I believe amen yeah My point is this, we need to trust the Lord no matter what, you know, and I loved uh, what Christine Kane said, she said, I've got this, I've got that, she said, you know, whatever happens to me, this is a woman of faith, I expected her to say, well, cancer ain't going to kill me, I'm going to believe God and I'm going to recover from cancer, you know, and that's the way I felt uh, that God would heal me, you know, but I, I allowed the doctors to help me, uh, and uh, Christine Kane said, you know, I'm not bothered. I'm trusting the Lord. And she more or less said, if I die, I die. But she, she said, no, I'm trusting the Lord. Because my point is this. No matter what happens, we're trusting him. You know, when I was diagnosed with cancer, it didn't affect my relationship with Christ. Uh, you know, I didn't go, so, God, why have you allowed this to happen to me? You know, it was happening. So the best thing that I could do was trust God in the middle of the crisis. And I did trust him. And when I've been teaching on healing in the Bible school, I have been healed hundreds and hundreds of times. Uh, I hope that's not an exaggeration, but dozens if not hundreds of times. I've been healed of so many things. And I will continue to believe God. Amen? Amen. And just because a great man of God didn't receive the healing, most, you know, Kenneth Hagin, when he was in the middle of the healing revival, he said, most of these great preachers will die sick. He said, but I won't. He said, because I believe that God will always heal me. And nearly all the great preachers died sick. You know, I don't want to mention name, the lady preacher and the guy who led millions to Christ. Nearly all of them died sick. But look at what they achieved in their life. And when you looked at their lives, they were trusting God no matter what. Amen. Amen. Kenneth Hagin was unusual. If people say, well, what about Kenneth Hagin? Yeah, he lived 50, 60 years and he was never sick. Well, how many people do you know who lived 50, 60 years and never got sick? Do you know every one of us could do that, but most of us don't experience that. Amen? So what do you do, as Philip said, when you're not experiencing uh, what you know you could experience? You trust God. Amen? Yes, thank God for Caleb. He was 85 years old. And he said, I've still got the same strength that I had when I started off. You know, I wish everyone could be like Caleb, but there was only one Caleb. And remember, you're not Caleb. <laughs> there was Moses. Yes. Do I want to live 120 years? No, thank you. I, I'm looking forward to going to heaven. Not immediately, but eventually. <laughs> I'm looking forward to going to heaven. I really am. You know, and... Uh, yeah, I've never preached a sermon like this, by the way. And then I look at someone. There was one guy who preached in this church. I'm not mentioning names. He was, had the most amazing faith adventures. I'd never heard of anyone in the past or present who'd had the adventures he had. He got into countries without visas and bumped into people who got him a visa and all kinds of amazing things. I really looked up to him. He was a man of faith. And then I heard he died of cancer. And I, I was shocked because 
Uh, he had the kind of faith that I had not seen in any person that I knew personally, you know. But that didn't affect my opinion of him. And it didn't affect my relationship with Christ. Because when you're rooted and grounded in Christ, and when you have a relationship with him, nothing will shake you. Memorize Psalm 62, verse 5 and 6. My soul, wait patiently for the Lord. For my expectation is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. So the doctors say, you've got cancer. Okay. That doesn't change my relationship with God. If anything, my relationship with God deepens. Because now I need him more. Amen. And there's been other things as well. Sometimes you don't know what people are going through. And then another person who I greatly admire. I think he, he's unique. I don't think there's been anyone ever like him in the kingdom. Uh, I'll mention his name because he's made public what he's going through. It's Arthur Blessed. Arthur Blessed, there's a documentary about him. The Lord told him to carry his cross across America. And then gradually he carried his cross across every nation on earth walking across the nation and of course are gone uh, across the island groups as well he walked into iraq he walked into he saw yasser arafat and witnessed to him he walked into every every country that you can name on the planet he walked into it walked across it and led thousands of people to the lord on the way yeah. arthur blessed amen and i think he, he's 10 years older than me and uh Listening to him the other day, I just looked at some of his, uh, you know, things on, the, on YouTube. And he said how, you know, he's having heart surgery. And he said, uh, after the heart surgery, he said, if I wake up in heaven, he said, I'm fine with that. He said, but, you know, I'm trusting God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And he said to the Lord, how come I've got a heart problem? You know, because he, he, walk, he walked across the whole planet. He walked across every nation on earth, every single nation and all the islands, yeah. island groups, and uh, leading thousands and thousands of people to the Lord on the way. I, I really look up to him and admire him. And then now at the age of 83, he's talking about his health, but he's still, when he's telling you about his health and he's saying, I've got a heart problem, and he said, I can't breathe fully, but you need to give your life to Christ, uh, you know. <laughs> And uh, he's committed to doing what Christ called him to do until his last breath. And I want to say to you, no matter what you go through, yes, always believe God for the best. Amen. Always believe God. If you believe in healing, expect to get healing. Amen. If you believe in God's provision, expect to get God's provision, even if Solomon doesn't want to hear about it. Uh, <laughs> I know Solomon very well. And then, you know, there's uh, another great man of God that I really admire. And I'm just finding out these things, you know, because they're kind of in my age group and some of them are older than them, older than me. And uh, that's Graham Powell. Now, Graham Powell grew up in a Christian home. He's from New Zealand. And then he went on the, on the boats, you know, as a sailor and committed all the sins that a Christian shouldn't commit. And backslid and went away from the Lord. He, he's given his testimony in this church. And, uh, you know, then when he tried to come back to the Lord, he, he suffered all kinds of oppression. He, he felt that he was demonized and he needed deliverance. So he went to many different people uh, and they prayed for him for deliverance. Some told him he needs deliverance. Some said, you don't need deliverance. Some said, you've had deliverance. And he, he was confused. And he went to so many different people to get prayed for, for deliverance, to be delivered. Because he knew that he was demonized through the sins, no doubt, that he had committed. And he gave his testimony here. And so, you know, he went before the Lord. He said in one year, again, I don't know anyone else has done He said he fasted nearly nine months of the year. For now how many days is that? Nine zero nine three is about 270 days. Of 365 days, he fasted. And he still didn't get delivered. 
And then the Lord gave him the strategy. Now here's a point. In your crisis, always when you're standing on the word of God, because that's what you need to stand. If the Holy Spirit gives you a strategy, follow it. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And the Holy Spirit spoke to him and said, speak to the mountain. The mountain was his demonic uh, uh, oppression. And this is a great way to get uh, delivered and healed. Yeah. So for months, he spoke to the mountain. He spoke to the need for deliverance. He spoke for, to the need for healing. And he did it for months and months and months. And eventually it broke and he was completely free. Do you know something? That Graham Powell went on to have one of the strongest deliverance ministries on the planet. And he did seminars with Bill Sobratsky and Derek Prince. Uh, they were down in Brighton. Your neck of the woods. They're down in Brighton doing a, a deliverance seminar. Derek Prince and Graham Powell. And Graham, uh, the, the strongest deliverance service we've ever had in New Life was when Graham Powell came years ago. We had a meeting here and we had a meeting in South Harrow. And when he got up and gave his testimony, he just spoke and people started getting delivered. People started manifesting all over, even wriggling on the floor. People that we sit next to on Sunday were wriggling on the floor. And they got delivered. Amen. Amen. The point I'm trying to get across to you, make sure that you are rooted and grounded in God's word. You're rooted and grounded in God's word. You know who you are. You know what God's promised you. Keep your relationship with God alive through prayer and the word on a daily basis. And whether you go to university or whether a crisis comes, a crisis can't take you away from Christ when you're rooted and grounded in Him. Amen? Amen. The great Pastor Yonggi Cho, pastor of the largest church the world has ever seen. Most of you know who Yonggi Cho is. He pastored a church of 900,000 people in Korea. It was an Assemblies of God church. And he had an ailment in his stomach where if he ate certain foods, he was in pain. So Yonggi Cho started traveling around the world. I heard him speak. He spoke at some of our conferences. One of the most revered and uh, honored preachers in the world because of what God had done through him. Uh, you know, he, he had this pain in his stomach for 40 years. And he said, one day the Holy Spirit spoke to him and said, why have you put up with this? He said, but Lord, it's a thorn in my flesh. The Lord said, it's not a thorn in the flesh from me. It's a thorn in the flesh from the devil. He said, you can be healed of it. So he stood there and he claimed his healing and stood on the word of God. For one hour, he stood on the word of God declaring he's healed. And he was completely healed after 40 years of suffering. During that time, he was seeing hundreds and hundreds of people healed all over the world. In fact, thousands. But you see, when you're rooted and grounded in God, nothing shakes you. The greatest thing that you need to be investing in is your relationship with Christ, your daily devotional time, reading the Bible, praying, you know, believing the Word of God. When people who knew that I had this, that, and the other wrong with me asked me, how's your health? My answer is always the same. I'm standing on the word of God every day. Amen. And sometimes when I get up in the morning, I say this. I say, Lord, I, I thank you that your word is true. Yeah. I thank you that you have said in Psalm 103, verse 1 to 5, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, satisfies your mouth with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Whoa, my youth is going to be renewed at 73. That sounds pretty good, amen? So I tell the Lord, I'm standing on your word. Your word is true. And your word is healing to all my flesh. It's living and it's active. So when I put it inside of me by speaking it and saying aloud, it's active. It's acting like medication, but much better. It's called the gospel. <laughs> the gospel heals everything. Amen. So I just want you to know 
regardless of what the life has for me in the future, that my anchor and my rock is Jesus. Make him your anchor and your rock. And nothing will move you. No crisis, no storm, no tsunami tsunami can stop you from uh, having all the things that he's promised you. So believe God, trust God. God's got a plan for you, way beyond this life. I wonder how David felt. You say, oh, what about Caleb? Yeah, I want to be like Caleb. What about Moses? Yeah, I want to be like Moses. But I, I don't know many people who were like that. But I'm glad they were like that. It shows you the potential. Amen? Amen. You see, but the thing is this. God's got a plan for you all the way into eternity. I wonder how David felt. You know, I think some of you know because we've said it. How old was David when he died? If you know the answer, don't answer. I'm asking all the people who don't know the answer. Stop there. He's 70. I'm seventy. <laughs> yeah, David was 70 when he died. He was not well. He could jump over a mountain. He could uh, destroy his enemies. He was fit and strong and healthy. And what a warrior he was. Nobody ever defeated David in a battle all the days of his life. Amen. Amen. And he was a man after God's own heart. But in his last few days... He needed a hot water bottle. I don't know what kind that gave him. A hot water bottle. Because, you know, it's not the type that's allowed these days. If you don't know it, read the scriptures. I'm not going to go into it here. But then, he handed over the kingdom. He had everything prepared for the temple to be built. He had stored up billions of pounds of gold and silver and everything that was needed. And he was ready to go. And when you get to heaven, you'll see David. Amen? Amen. But I tell you something about David. He trusted God no matter what. No matter what he went through, he trusted God. And that's a point I want to get across to you. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Acknowledge him. Acknowledge him. I told the people who were giving me chemo. I thank you for your help, but I'm, I'm looking to God. And my family told me off. (laughs) <laughs> said let the doctors help you you know don't tell them you know you're not looking to them but I thank God for their help I thank God for the doctors help amen but my anchor and my confidence is not in the doctors it's in Christ and that should be the way for you and God will look after you William Seymour last one you know who William Seymour was he was a, basically triggered the whole Pentecostal movement that is now the biggest human movement that the human race has ever seen. Nearly a billion people are now Pentecostals, tongue-talking, charismatic Christians. And William Seymour, the miracles he saw in Azusa Street, if you read about them, they were off the scales. People's hands were growing out, eyes were appearing in sockets where there were no eyes. He died when he was 52. You know, but is he happy now? He's a lot happier than you. (laughs) And he's with Christ. So I leave you with this thought as I close this message. Whatever you do, believe the word of God. Stand on the word of God. Apply the word of God to your circumstances. Amen? Amen? And whatever happens, trust him. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own insight. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Christ is my rock. And he will make straight your paths. You meditate on that. Every line has loaded with meaning. And the meaning comes out. You know, when you've got a steak in front of you, you know it's tasty. But you don't get the taste until you chew it. You've got to chew scripture to get the flavor, to savor the flavor. Amen. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a great big hand of praise. (laughs) Hallelujah. Let's stand together. Hallelujah. If you're here today 
And Christ isn't your all in all. If you haven't made him the anchor of your life, that no matter what happens to you, you're trusting him. You can do that today. And the decision you make today, you see everything starts with a decision. You want to buy a house, you sign the document, and then you do the rest. So you make a decision today that I'm going to make Jesus my all in all. I'm going to trust him no matter what. I'm going to stand on the word of God, even when all my circumstances deny it. Amen? So let's lift our hands to the Lord. Pray in, your, in, in the spirit for a couple of minutes and then we'll make a declaration. And that declaration can be life-changing if you mean it. Keep praying. Faye, I wonder if we can sing that song. Christ is my firm foundation. The rock on which I stand. Lift your voice up. Receive grace from him. Receive strength from him. Receive power from him. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. All right, let's make this declaration together. This is a declaration that you are making Christ your all in all. You are dependent on Him. No matter what happens, you're going to trust Him. The decision you make today will be lived out in the rest of your life and will affect you for eternity. So let's make a declaration. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you have given me natural life. And Heavenly Father, I thank you that you have given me eternal life. And right now, I commit my life to you. I want you to know, Lord, that I want you to be Lord of every area of my life. And whatever happens, I will trust you because you are trustworthy. Thank you for forgiving me for all my sins and for loving me even though I fall short of your glory. And now, Lord, take my life and use it for your glory. Receive his grace. If you don't know Jesus, cry out to him. If you die without Jesus, you'll be separated from God for all eternity in a place of great suffering. Call upon the Lord. The Bible says, whoever shall call upon the Lord will be delivered. Whoever shall call upon the Lord will be saved. Say, Lord, take my life. Use it for your glory. So say this, I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That you have heard my prayer. That you heard my prayer. Help me to live for you. Help me to live for you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. Hallelujah.